Good morning or good afternoon, fellow inkers. I my name is Terry Jones, and I'm going to work on some Duralar today. And what I am going to do is I am going to work on getting this painting or this uh, scene done in alcohol inks. And what I want to show you is a variety of way of doing this. Now, first, I'm going to be using <coughs> two of the Duralar products. First one I'm going to be using is this Duralar matte film. So I'm actually going to be painting on both sides of this Duralar matte film. But the second one that I'm going to be using is this Duralar clear film. It's a acetate um, alternative, and I use that a lot in my painting also. So the first thing I did was I decided on the painting, and I'm I'm kind of edited it a little bit. Um, it was much larger, and I want to put a little tree, this kind of tree, right, kind of in here. And um, so this is the painting that I'm going to do. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a reference. So <coughs> this is actually what I use the little uh, Duralar for here. I want to make a reference kind of of lines of this painting. So what I'm, I'm going to take a, a piece, uh, I'm going to take a Sharpie. And I don't want every single line, but what I do want are, is I want to kind of show where some of the more interesting lines are. Now there's a... So I'm using my Sharpie here to find the big shapes. Um, here you can see I'm kind of outlining where I want some of the fainter lines to go. And I am outlining some of the trees. And I'm just using this as a reference. This will help me when I go to finish the painting. It'll help me see where I want my lights and darks. And it'll just, uh, as I said, it'll be a reference. Um, so I'm just about done. Thank you. And so then I'm going to take this off and then here is kind of a reference photo for me. So I'm going to take my reference. I'm going to put it off to the side so I can see it, but not necessarily. It's not my total focus because I'm going to go kind of by it. And then I'm going to take my Duralar and I'm going to put it on top of this. Now there. There's a couple reasons for this. One of them is that I do not want to have all of these black lines showing. Um, if I had this lovely, I have this lovely little red that I want to come out there, I don't want it showing in black lines. I just, it's, it's not what I want. What I love the feature of is I love the sense of light the blue light coming through here, and then it breaks up into the yellowy, the warmer light in there, and the big trees in, in the background, and uh, the sense of distance. So that's what I'm going to try to capture. Okay, so maybe the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do a background. So what I want to do here is this, what you notice that I've done is here's the painting and I flipped it, which is why I love the clear Duralar. I'm putting the piece on top of it and now I see things upside down, I guess is the best way to say it. And what I want to do is I want to put a, a light coat of of some color on here. Actually, I think I want to put the light coat on the front because everything can live with the light coat. The darker coats may go on the back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some blending solution and I'm going to Drop some blending solution. Oh, whoops, all over here. Yeah, literally all over there. 
um, and I'm going to then I'm going to drop just a little bit of some color in here. So here is some sunshine yellow, but I want this to be very um, uh, kind of is this peach bellini. I want some sandal. I think there's my sandal. I want this to be very pale. I don't want it to be really, I, I don't want it to be super, uh, super intense. I want it to be fairly pale and I want it to be almost all over. So I'm going to put some, so I'm going to take my brush here or my thing here. See, I work through these problems. I think about it all night, and then I get down here, and then I change my mind. So uh, what I just did is I just cleaned off this beautiful little thing. And all I'm doing is putting, what I've used are the lights. And the lights allow me to put a very, very, very fine piece um, or color on, on this. And I can see that I have this on the back. Okay, so I have this very fine color on the back. And I want to see what it ends up looking like on the other side. So now it's just very, very, very kind of mellow. Um, I don't I want to let that dry. I want to put in a little bit of the blues. And so maybe I want to put just a little tiny bit of the blues. And again, this is a, a softer color here too. And just putting a little tiny bit of the blues around in, in the corners. Um, this is stone washed. Um, it's darker on this side than it is on the other side, so I can end up with just a little bit of blues. I'm going to want to look as if you can see through some of these colors. Okay. And then I want to put just a tiny bit. I want to get I want to get um, some shadowy stuff in here. So I am going to use a fantastic brush and see if I can just use a little bit of something like Peach Bellini. Let me put some down here to see if I can end up getting these to be ever so slightly darker. Now, the problem is that I've got to make sure that it is, that's not going to be too, now it's making it ever so slightly lighter, isn't it? A little terracotta, maybe. Just want to put this in a little tiny bit as if I've got a little tiny bit of, uh, of trees happening back here. I know this tree down here is much redder, so let me put a little bit more red down here in this guy. But I'm just putting just a little bit in in the hopes that this is going to be fairly fine. Now where is my, and then I'm going to take the, I want to make sure that most of the lines go away. So I'm just kind of letting it become a little, okay. And I've got branches here and branches there and branches there. So now when I flip it over, 
hopefully it'll have a nice kind of warm background in there and we'll see how that how that starts to work so the other thing that I'm going to have to do is when I flip it around and get this even I also have to make sure that it's not in this area here because that's got some glowing on the trees so let me pull this out so I'm going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth to to make this so I want this to be this is a very glowing piece here and this actually back here is one of the ones that kind of glows too. So I want to put some glowing in these guys. So we're, we're going to glow just a little bit in them. Um, the Fantastics I find work really well to uh, do some of this. Okay, flip it over. And then you have to keep on remembering to flip over both sides okay so at this point I want to start putting in a little bit I'm, I'm getting that foggy look um, I may end up I'm not I like the, the it's still a little too dark back there or too um, A little too bright in some of this area so I'm just going to see if I can get that to calm down just a little bit where am I am I at the right area I am seems like it's just still to a little a little too bright in here but so I'm gonna Calm it down just a little bit. Let's see how I can get that to work. I want it to be a darker color, but I don't want it to be exactly the, the same color. Okay, we'll try that again. Flip this over. Flip this over keep on putting a piece of white paper underneath of it it's a lot easier to see what I got happening here now I'm concentrating on doing the front of the painting and I'm doing another layer of color I've got some blue there that I'm putting in with a stamping tool um, I put a little bit of cobalt blue in and with the stone washed and now I'm using a stamp and I'm just putting a little tiny bit of, of red in so that it kind of is soft there and you can see me stamping again I will take a little bit of the yellow and put some yellow in and then I'm going to keep on going around and around and try to get everything to blend together At the very end I'm going to throw some of this red in and I'm going to splash it around and get some color going and then I'll let it dry so I flipped this over and I decided that I was going to put a little more green on the back of it. So this is me doing that. Now I've got it over again and I'm going to continue. At this point I'm going to start putting in the actual trees. So I'm starting with the lighter colors and then I'm getting darker colors. Um, I tried this mushroom. It didn't really work as well as I thought it would work. And I ended up in the end using more teak wood than mushroom. Uh, this one tree gave me a bit of a problem but then I just kept on kept on working and I put teak wood in here and I worked with teak wood and I just worked in between everything I got to start looking as if I get the lines of the trees going. Um, <clears throat> what I wanted to do is start a pattern here. I want to get some beautiful colors happening I want to get some filigree happening at the top and I want the trees to look round and lit on one side. So 
I just keep on working back and forth and back and forth with a variety of tools to try to get that to work. This first tree gave me a real problem. And then um, this tree in the background, I did that with um, a little bit of the uh, mushroom, which worked much better for me. And I just keep on going, as I say, back and forth and back and forth, adding more trees, adding more depth, um, working with my my piece and um, trying to kind of feel my way through it. Um, there's some real dark trees and then there's some light trees and um, I just want to get it starting to feel like I have my my verticals working for me. So um, I'll start on the other side now and get my verticals working there. And this is just sketchy. I mean, I'm not at the end whatsoever. I'm beginning to just block in colors with this teak wood and with um, the, other, the other colors, blocking in darker areas, darker shadowy areas, trying to get some cross braces going here, starting to develop the painting to the next layer. And um, it's just a lot of sketchy, seeing what I can do, layering some more darks in, working a little bit at a time, and seeing what's next in the painting. So I've now I'm putting some green in there. So I decided to put some green and call it a day for that. Thanks. Now I need to go back again for another layer. I'm at, back on the back side of the painting again. And what I'm trying to do is get more of a green glow in the forest. And then I want more of the dark that happens around the whole, the whole painting to kind of highlight that really light, the light that's coming in. So I used a cobalt and I liked it, but then I realized that I've, I've got to really clean out um, the cobalt from where um, <clears throat> the reds were. And then I realized I really like to see much more light through the cobalt. So I'm doing this sprinkling thing that's happening and I'm using a paper towel and I'm sprinkling some more and I'm working on kind of removing some of what I did, trying to get it to look much more um, cohesively glowing together. You can see I flip it back over and then I work again on the back side seeing what the trees look like, kind of cleaning up some of the back side. I um, <clears throat> am cleaning up now. I'm pulling off all of the areas that have the red in it and I'm actually pulling some more of the back side out too. Um, didn't like that where that green was there. I decided that I wanted a little more light on uh, the one side of the tree and I like that a lot. So now I begin the process of finishing it off. I'm starting to establish my lightest lights and my darkest darks. And a lot of the time with alcohol inks, and one of the reasons I love the Doralar is that I can clean them up. I'm working right now on the front of the painting and I'm pulling out some color and then I find out that maybe I need to work a little bit on the back of the painting. Um, on the back of the painting here, I'm making sure that those blues that I put there are clean so that I can see my reds underneath. So uh, what I'm gonna to continue to do for the next you know, 10, 15 minutes is I'm going to continue to enhance all of these colors. I want to get the reds looking brilliant I want to get that path through the forest looking right. I'm Right now I'm trying to get a little more light in the very top of the painting um, because I want it to look as if there's there's some light, a light passage almost all the way up. Um, what I, I'm doing now, I'm working with a wet paper towel and I'm pulling off some colors and now I'm flipping it over again and I'm looking and I am adjusting. I'm softening some colors with a wet paper towel. Um, I didn't like that little bit of green in there so I was taking that little bit of green out and I 
like the uh, I'm cleaning it up a little more in the front and in the back um, now I'm cleaning off some more of the green on the back so at this stage it really is all about trying to get the painting to become not a copy of the other uh, piece but to become something that looks as if it is um, it has the mood that I'm looking for so as you can see I just keep on working and working and working trying to get the reds to really stand out and trying to get um, my colors to work um, I'm putting some sprinkles in I'm pulling out color with the fantastic I'm putting more color in with a brush I'm assessing the painting again um, I'm looking at trying to figure out what's next well what's next is I think I want to put um, a foreground in so here I'm painting the foreground in with a little bit of Valencia and then I'm going to use a uh, paper towel that's slightly wet to see if that will give me enough texture it didn't quite give me enough so I get put a little bit of uh, yellow in a brush to give me more texture uh, what I'm trying to do now is to get it that pathway to look inviting and to get the leaves to look as if they're on the ground and that there are leaves there so there hence the sprinkling that I just did um, I will continue to work with the painting assess it again um, and try to decide what is next I'm liking a lot of it but I've decided I really need to figure out how to get some excellent black lines in there so um, but first I decided I'm going to put more reds in I thought that I had done the black at this point but not more reds more reds more reds I want to get that those reds to sing a little bit more um, putting some yellow in the reds in the hopes that they will um, the colors will work a little better there warming up the background right behind that tree I decided it was too it was too cool and here I am working on the back to make sure that those reds I just put in were pretty much clear so um, sprinkling in the corners with a little bit of color um, sprinkling in the corners with a little bit of the dark I wanted to get that shadow to look like it's coming around I didn't like the the you know I, I need more more darks more filigree and at this point I decide that um, if I want to get a little more darks here I'm putting more darks in again and um, I'm going to put some clean up on the back again put some more in the front made a mess I didn't mean to do that <laughs> so then I'm trying to clean up the mess that I made because I'm really good at making messes but it worked out in the end it looks fine in the end but I went ah I cleaned up the wrong side oh well and uh, so I'm gonna put more red in it put more blue in it put more darks in it work 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 so now as I said I was going to end up putting more red in that mess that I made um, I had to, I was having too much stuff under the <laughs> I had to put another piece of white paper under so now I've grabbed a sharpie what I want to do is I want a lot of dark lines here and trying to do it with a, um, a regular uh, brush didn't work so I just grab the sharpie and I used both of the this is a one of the ones with the ultra tip a thin tip a fine tip and an ultra tip and so I'm using the fine tip and the ultra tip to make the um, the different lines here you see right now I'm working with a fine tip and what this is going to do is it's going to continue to give me just those little darks and the little details that begins to define everything here so here I am fine tipped making some trees here um, working again trying to figure out what the painting needs 
because at this point I want I'm trying to catch the mood rather than copying in any way the photo so here I'm putting a little more um, lines line work in the very back there and I still see that I need to get some more lights and some more darks in here um, so here I go again flipping over trying to clean out some areas to get some more red over in places and um, here I'm going to splash a little more expand where I have um, some some reds and uh, splash all over the thing I love in the end I really love the splashing and then I put just a little bit more dark in the very corner there and I will then pull a lot of that out um, I'll use a you know use my that's a q-tip I'm using to pull out my reds I want to put the reds back in again and I just keep on working back and forth and back and forth I like to to sprinkle and then clean it up I like to use a just a slightly damp towel that's just damp in places <clears throat> so I keep on picking it up and drying it and putting it down and looking at different places here I've decided that I needed a nice clean piece of paper and I'm going back again and I'm just focusing on getting that my details working the way I want them to work again back and forth back and forth deciding what I want to work and what isn't um, I realized I needed to emphasize a couple trees back there and I just kind of work work the painting at this point it's what the painting is becoming that's more important than anything else I'm trying to capture a mood that's what it is so now I'm down to my final details I put a mat around it and I decide what's working and what's not working mats always help me see what's working and what's not working I see there's a dark area in there I'm not fond of um, I see that I need a little more dappled light in the forest there so I'm going to dapple the light a little bit um, and you know this is the final editing just trying to figure out what makes the better painting and at this point I'm not looking at my reference photo anymore I'm just looking at what makes this a good painting so I'm working on breaking up some of that dark area that I said I didn't like and I'm getting really close to finishing it and then I'm noticing at the very end I need some some more directional uh, branches coming in so I put some directional branches in with a, a, a brush and then I put them in with a pen and as I just get these final details I realize this actually is a very lovely painting and I hope you all will um, enjoy it and try it yourself thank you so much for watching bye